Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Hi everyone, I'm Joni Parsons, co-creator of Revel 11, along with Monica Smith, who is Hello. right there. It's so nice to see you all tonight. Um, as many of you know, we created Revel 11 about four years ago um, with in-person events here in Seattle, but quickly pivoted online in March. And since then, I'm so proud to say that we've had more than 80 online events and we wanna create edgy, informative and educational events for women all over the world. So thank you for joining us tonight. I am so pleased to introduce Jean Hamilton. I had the opportunity to meet Jean many years ago when I was up for um, an award here in Seattle called the uh, Nellie Cashman Award. And they said, you need to speak in front of 500 people the night of the award ceremony. I'm like, oh my God, I am not a natural speaker. I have no idea how to do that. I just made me shake just even thinking about it. I met Jean and I worked with her over the course of a period of time. And she gave me tools and tips and helped me walk through all of my fears about that evening's presentation and I was able to nail it. And the only reason why I nailed it, I have to say, is because Jean worked with me and gave me everything that I needed to feel confident and be a storyteller that evening and really step into my power in front of 500 people. So thank you, Jean. I think about that evening so much and I just appreciate you and all of the tips that you've given me and continue to give me to be a good speaker, an excellent speaker, both in person and now on, on Zoom. So welcome, Jean. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joni, for that very sweet introduction. You know, I have to say, I um, am so impressed with you and Monica and how you have dealt with this pandemic that it's just, it's pretty remarkable that not only did you totally rebrand Revel 11, now, as you say, you've given 80 events and they've been awesome events. I feel like you, you decided, all right, what are we going to do with this pandemic and make the most of it? And man, both of you have, you should be very, very proud of yourself. So I want everybody here, give a, you know, if you can turn on your, your video for a bit or give them a chat of just give applause to them because yeah, thumbs up. They really- Thank you, Jean. Uh, so Thank you, Jean. That's so sweet. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> That's very, <laughs> very, very true. So I want to make this as interactive as possible. You know, we're all in our own spaces here. So I will be um, having you use the chat as much as you want. Anytime you have a question that comes up, feel free to put that in or response. We also will be moving into one breakout room where you'll be meeting with just one other person here and you'll get a chance to apply the material. I found that when you really make it your own and apply it, it works better. So I'm curious, every, everybody know where that chat button is there. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being you love giving presentations, you love speaking in public, and one, uh, you'd really rather do anything else. I mean, a root canal sounds better than, than public speaking. Where are you at now? One to 10, just put that in the chat there. Let's see, I got to get the glasses on. Oh, wow, 10, 10. They wish they were speaking here too, too. All right, wonderful to have a, a variety of speakers here. Yeah, this is great, seven, seven. Now, how about speaking online? How do you feel about speaking online versus, again, 10, you really are kind of liking it. And one, mm, you, you miss those days we could all be together. 10, another 10, eight, oh boy, nine, all right. People are really loving this. Okay, good. And four, all right, PTSD, all right, thank you, thank you, yes. Um, and, and one more question here. If, if there's one area that you would like more confidence, even you tens out there, uh, if there's one area you want to feel even more confident, what would that be in a you know, specific circumstance or instance? If, if you wanna share that, I'd love to see um, what you have here. 
openings. Yes, openings are always the hardest, aren't they? So when searching for a word and can't recall, keeping audience intention online, speaking eloquently, storytelling, great. These are all, all wonderful. Um, stop with asking questions to an audience. Yeah. Okay. So um, the, the thing that I love about speaking is that you can always get better. You can always, always improve so that you tens of people that love it, you can always refine and, and get better and better. And if you have a big fear of speaking, if you have PTSD doing it, change is possible. There's lots of things you can do to make it better. Now, a uh, little bit about me. I have been, um, you know, I created speaking results, oh, now 20 years ago. And I have worked with fabulous people like Joni. I've also worked with um, CEOs, CFOs, architects, engineers, designers, lots of big companies as well as small companies. And I absolutely love what I do. And I love it because people make changes and it has an impact in their life. Now, <clears throat> if you had told me when I was young that this is what I, was, would be doing with my life, I would have told you, you are absolutely nuts, absolutely nuts. Because I had a terrible fear of speaking and even saying my name was a big deal. I would, you know, if I had to hold a pa piece of paper in school, the paper would be shaking like this. And so I had a good solution for this. So I would bring a big binder <laughs> and hold it in, in the binder there so it would weight it down so people wouldn't see that I was trembling, but I was. So I realized that I needed to get over this fear. And I did a lot of work with people. And I remember one person said, Jean, if I could just reach in and pull out that fear, what would happen? And I remember at first feeling like, Oh, what a relief. And then I felt like, oh, that part of me that was so scared, actually, it really wanted to do a good job. It, it had a lot of energy and it was vulnerable. And all of those things could help me become a better speaker. And so for the first time, rather than hating this part of me that was scared, I brought it in and said, hey, come on in. And in doing that, the fear began to loosen its hold. So in today, today's talk, I'm going to share with you tips about how I overcame my fear and how I've worked with other people to help overcome their fear. So we're going to talk about what you can do with your thoughts, what you can do with your body, what you can do with your attitude, and also some online tips. And for those of you that are speaking a lot and you're confident speakers, again, think where you want to be even more confident. It could be in more of a personal situation. It could be that you want to speak up more. Um, there's a lot of things happening in the world right now, <laughs> like climate change and COVID and the election and social justice, that maybe you want to add your voice to it. And so how you can not stop yourself, but this work is really about how you can bring your best self forward and show up the way you, that you want. Now, I would say if there's some of my special sauce as a speech coach is that I work both with what I call the inner work and the outer work. The inner work are what are the beliefs and attitudes and thoughts that are either serving you or not. And then the outer work, what are the skills, how to structure a talk, storytelling, the use of your voice, all of these things are really important. Um, but I find that if we don't deal with the inner work first, then it's harder to achieve those goals. So in tonight, we're going to focus more on the inner work. I've always loved this quote, the first sale is to yourself. Very true. You teach people whether to respect you or not. You teach them whether your ideas have value. And so again, how you feel about yourself is going to have a big impact on how you're perceived by others. I've always loved this quote, be yourself, everyone else is taken. 
be yourself, everyone else is taken. You can admire other people, but ultimately we wanna hear from you, your unique, wonderful self. And everybody has something different to add. And we love to have you add that in your most authentic way. And so you wanna change from fight or flight to stay and play. People, um, when, when you think of fight or flight, how do you feel when that comes up, right? A little discombobulated usually. Now, when I just say the word stay and play, do you feel how your body can settle down and relax? Um, I've been reading this book lately by Deb Dana. She, she talks about befriending the nervous system. So in those situations when fight or flight comes up, you can actually befriend the nervous system to move to stay and play. We believe what we repeatedly tell ourselves. It's like the brain, these neurons fire when we say these words. Now, when I'm working with someone that has a fear of speaking, I you know, will say, what do you want? And they often tell me what they don't want. They don't wanna feel flustered. They don't wanna feel nervous. They don't wanna feel shaky, whatever it is. Uh, and the unconscious mind doesn't hear the not part. It just hears that word and it basically begins to practice that and link that to the situation. So instead you wanna think about what it is you truly want. And again, that helps you move to this day and play. So to get this new mindset, this, I, I've always liked the quote, where attention goes, energy flows and results show. To get that new mindset, you want the words to be positive. You want them to be vivid you know, juicy words, something like spunky or dynamic, whatever those words that really make you feel alive. And you want the words to be self-initiated so that it's not, well, I want to inspire people. I want people to feel inspired. Instead, it would be that you feel inspired within about your message and you're really excited to share it with the, with the group. So when, when caught in a loop of negative inner dialogue, you want to stop yourself and replace it with positive words. So that helps you get out of the loop. So I want to, uh, we're going to move into breakout rooms in a second here. You get to unmute yourself and talk. <laughs> You'll have two minutes and make sure that you can both have time to share. And what are the words or phrases that really help you get into the state that you want? You know, what will help you show up the way that you want to really be at your best? Everybody should be back. All right. Hello, everyone. Hello. So I'm curious what if there's a phrase that you heard that you really like or one that you came up with that you like that you'd like to share, feel free to share it in the chat. Confident, sure, steady, love it. Yeah. Relax, yes, yes, good. If she forgets something, the audience won't know, definitely, yes. <laughs> it's good to remember that, yeah. So, so as I say, the words have impact and Again, whatever you think about gets stronger. So any situation where you think, ah, I would like a little more confidence, you can change your state. You can change your state. And it's how everybody gets triggered by stuff. And it's how long you stay in that state then. That's what you can change. Like we're still going to feel stuff, but then you don't need to stay there. So what we can now do with the body to help find that more grounded, relaxed state, the main thing that really helps you is breathing, breath. I mean, it's pretty crucial to life. <laughs> like we do it all the time. But many of us, when we're feeling stressed or anxious, we'll hold our breath. Instead, you wanna think of nice, deep belly breathing. You cannot be in your power. You cannot really connect to others unless you're breathing and breathing nice and deeply and fully. When we talk about moving into that um, stay and play state, that's when we're feeling connected and we're breathing. If we're holding our breath, we're not able to do that. 
So um, I know these are my kids when back when they were babies, they're in their 20s now. But I um, used to love to just watch them breathe. There's something so wonderful about seeing a little being that breathes really fully and babies haven't forgotten how to breathe. They just let their bellies expand nice and easily. Uh, but as adults, we often get more into this state. <laughs> yeah. Anyone relate to that? That you know, stuff happens. And, and as you look at this uh, picture of this woman here, does she look like someone you wanna talk to now? Does she look like she's in her power, right? It's that holding of the breath can get us stuck. So instead, when we breathe, we are able to access really our best self. I've always loved this quote, the difference between fear and excitement is breath. So if you're feeling a little bit of that adrenaline, taking a breath lets you move into excitement, which is obviously much more pleasant. So let's take a couple deep breaths together right now. And um, I want you to put your feet on the ground and you know, uh, you can put your hands on your ribs if you want to feel them move. But we're gonna take a, a breath in through the nose for four counts and then hiss out through the mouth for eight counts. So you're gonna breathe in and then hiss out. And again, breathing in and hiss out. And one more time, breathing in and hiss out. And just notice how your body has changed perhaps a bit from the beginning. And now I want you to notice a time in the past when you were perhaps not breathing fully, you were a little stressed and just send some breath to that you and see how as she receives breath, she can begin to soften, to open. And then think about an event in the future, something coming up. And again, sending some breath to that you. And just notice what happens. Do you become more available, more open? Okay, and when you're ready, you can come back to this time and place. And here's a, your, your second tip is when you catch yourself holding your breath, which again, we all do this. Take three nice deep breaths from the belly and notice how it can change your state. So I'm curious here, did people feel themselves just settle a little bit more taking those breaths? Did you, could you imagine? Yes, good, <laughs> yes. It's amazing to me how quickly just even three breaths can change your state, right? If any of you have uh, any trouble sleeping in the night, just taking three breaths can help you go, ah, you settle. I, again, you move more into that stay and play mode. And uh, this is something that, you know, it's, it's, it's not what you know, because everybody knows, oh yes, breathing is good, is what you do. And do you take that time for yourself? It really can change your state. Another tip here, be present, be present. The more that you can be right in the moment, the better. Rather than uh, imagining what the audience might be thinking that you're just right with your material and why it's important. A lot of times when people struggle with a fear of speaking, they're you know, thinking about a past event that maybe didn't go very well. And they're projecting that into the future. And that's not helpful. 
So judging yourself harshly or the fear of being judged harshly by others can often cause anxiety. Now, I know earlier there was somebody in the chat that mentioned uh, that um, I think you had had a stroke and that you stutter some now. And do you think that, I mean, it, to, to be honest of like, this is, and thank you for sharing that. Did you be, be honest of thinking that, hey, you know, this is what happened and you are still getting out there and you are still speaking. And to know, hey, we even have someone running for president that dealt with stuttering. That, that this is something that you can um, own and know that you are still fine exactly as you are. And that perhaps we can learn from that and grow from that. And sometimes that judgment is more in our head than what's actually happening. So I, I like to tell people, how can you transform judgment into curiosity? Because curiosity and judgment don't exist at the same time. They cancel each other out. If you are feeling judgmental towards someone else or you are feeling judgmental for others, you're not curious. But once you become curious, suddenly the world opens up a little bit more. You can find more that place of connection. And here, every perceived weakness can end up being a strength. Now, I know when I was dealing with my fear of speaking, what I was ashamed of was that vulnerability. When I realized, well, you know what? That's part of who I am. It's actually a strength. So, um, and, and, and like I say, every strength can turn into a weakness if overblown. I mean, um, if somebody is overly confident, it can turn into arrogance. So again, to think of, of how you can use what you have, what's authentic to you, and celebrate that. So here's tip number three. When feeling judgmental towards others or yourself, become present, become curious. And see, everything gets easier and you move into that stay or play. Does this make sense for people? Any, any comments here? Uh, I can sense, yeah, that there's always more to learn new ways to grow when you become curious. And that's how great um, partnerships can happen. Uh, when people are feeling um, anxious about speaking, often I found they're perfectionists. We have any perfectionists out there? <laughs> That, that often in this group that, that you have high standards, you want to do a good job, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to do a good job. That it's, uh, there's quality control when you're doing a good, if you, if you have high standards, that you want to meet those standards. The thing is, it can get in the way. And when it can get in the way is putting a lot of pressure on yourself, feeling like you need to know everything. And if you don't know something, somehow you failed. I know there was a lawyer I worked with recently and he was recently out of uh, a law school. He had just started at a new firm. And he said, you know, I feel like I should know everything that all the partners know. I feel like if I don't, I've somehow, you know, I, I'm not living up to my full potential and they're, they're disappointed. And I said, well, so how long have these partners been working at the firm? And he said, oh, you know, well, the guy I really admire, is, I think has been 30 years. <laughs> and I said, so isn't it maybe a little presumptuous? You think you should know everything that somebody that's been working there for 30 years knows? And he went, oh, yeah, maybe you're right, maybe not. And just by realizing that you could see he became lighter about it all. He wasn't so hard on himself that he needed to know everything. Now, if someone in your audience asks you something and you don't know the answer of it, put it out to other people in the audience and make them heroes. They love that. So again, you don't need to know everything. Um, the other thing that can happen with perfectionists is they do a great presentation, but there's one little mess up. And that little mess up gets magnified. 
and then that's all they see. I remember there was a, a woman that gave a great presentation. I was so proud of her. I had worked with her and she did a great job. I was crying. I was, I was, I was so pleased with, with how she did. And the first thing she said to me when I saw her was, you know, I really messed up that second line. <laughs> you know what? Nobody else was still thinking about that second line. So, so again, it's, it's often best just to let it go, let it go. So everybody, you know, stretch your arms out wide here now and just think, how can you just let something go? And again, find that place of more comfort, power, owning it, knowing you belong, you belong. There's a lot you have to share. So I often tell this uh, tip to people that are, um, you know, younger people that maybe are feeling intimidated working with older people or older people that are feeling dismissed working with younger people. But I know what I know. You know what you know. We are all learning together. You can say that with me here. <laughs> I know what I know. You know what you know. We are all learning together. Again, when we all show up fully, that's when the world becomes the most interesting place. Now, I, um, I, I'm a big believer that we have a lot to learn from animals. And this is my dear dog, Phoenix. He's a wind sprite, which is like a long haired whippet. And this guy, he's very, very fast, but he's also really friendly. He just loves, loves, loves other dogs. And he's got this attitude that as soon as he sees a dog, he thinks, okay, we're gonna be friends. And he's just taught me that you get what you expect. And so we go to these dog parks and I have people say, hey, you know, my, my dog usually doesn't like male dogs, but he really does love your dog. And they just have a great time hanging out together. And um, again, I, I wonder if more of us went into situations thinking, hey, you know, this could be a great time. We can all learn from one another. We can all grow. We can have fun because I find too many times people say, oh, we have these weekly meetings and they're just, they're, they're boring or, you know, they go on too long, whatever it is. And I think, well, how can you make the most of it to bring that sense of play and joy like Phoenix does so that the meetings can be fun? I know just, just the other day, I was actually scheduling a colonoscopy and, you know, it doesn't seem like that would be a fun thing, right? But this woman she's asking questions and we ended up having this great conversation and we're laughing and having a good time at the end of it she says oh you know i wish we could go for coffee <laughs> i thought yes me too i mean she really did make my day now that's not a situation where you'd normally think that could happen but it does it did and and so again if you stay open to this um it, it can all again work better for everyone so here's tip number five when going into a meeting, assume good intentions and a good outcome for everyone. I also like to tell people in getting more confidence is, is to continue to improve your skills. You might have noticed I've told quite a few stories here and storytelling is a really important piece of connecting to your audience and learning from them and having them share and grow and, and again, connect with you. So that's, that's a big piece that you also want to learn. But I wanted to cover a few online tips because there are, you know, obviously we're all doing our speaking online and there's a few things that you can do to make it go better. First of all, this is what I see a lot when um, people are speaking. Does that look familiar where you see a lot of ceiling and you notice how I, I'm more diminished if I'm looking there. So instead, you want to have, again, no ceiling and just a little bit of headroom there. And, uh, you know, so you're at eye level of the camera. You might need to move your computer around to, to have it uh, right at eye level, either put it on books or whatever, but it's really important piece there. The other thing is to look at the camera. 
that I know it's just a, a green light there, but the more that you can look and engage the camera, they feel like they're looking at you. Now, if it's just one other person there, I think it's fine to look at the person and see them, but you wouldn't want to do a whole presentation looking down. So again, see the camera. And I, I was at a an event the other day and someone suggested naming the camera. So you can name the camera with a friend that you enjoy. Do you want to think when you speak that you are speaking to a specific person? It's not general, it's a specific person. Uh, you also want to have good lighting so that we can see you easily. There's a lot of people that look a bit like um, there's a silhouette there. Again, you connect more when they can see you. Good sound. I have a little blue Yeti here that's plugged into my computer um, that can, can help with the sound and a clean background that you don't have the rest of the room can be a total mess, but what they see is clean. Now, I know there's a lot of people that like the virtual backgrounds that can get a little distracting unless you have a green screen. If you have a green screen, it can work well, but if you don't, your head disappears into it. So it, it can get a little distracting there. Are there any questions so far about any of this? I'm gonna take a, a look. And so actually one thing, uh, one question did come up. Can you expand on what you mean by being curious? Yeah, great, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, so curious means just open to different possibilities that say if you are feeling anxious about something you might think hmm what is it i need to remember or what is it i need to feel to get myself more in the state that i want or again if you're thinking hmm these people are not connecting here, um, they, they don't, they're not, don't seem to be buying into your message, you might think, what is it that they don't understand that is, you know, having a barrier or, or what is their perspective that makes them not open to this idea? And what I love about curiosity is it just, it just makes me feel open. It's the opposite of being defensive. And it's just contemplating. There's not a right or wrong. It's more, hmm, what, what, what would make this better, or what would, uh, what do I need to remember? And Jean, that goes um, very nicely. It leads very nicely into this next question about how much should you memorize a presentation before the event? Yeah, that's that's a good question too. It really depends on the person. Now, if it's a long presentation, that takes a lot of work to memorize because if you're going to memorize something, I tell people they should have it happy birthday memorized. By that, I mean, you know it so well, you can join happy birthday at any point in the, in the uh, song there, right? So it's like how an actor would memorize a script. So it doesn't sound like you're reading it or sound like it's a memorized thing, but that you have owned it totally and you are in the moment and the words are coming out as, as they were written, but it doesn't feel like it's this memorized thing. So if you have a long presentation, that is a lot of work and it takes a lot of skill to be able to do that. Sometimes I think, you know, just memorize maybe the first couple sentences because those are usually the hardest, right? That's when we're feeling the most anxious. And then it's often better to just have bullets and think, okay, so these are my main points and maybe here's a story I want to use. And, you know, just, you just need a couple words to have the story and then have that available for you to look at if you need to, you might not need to. Um, but, but again, it works different for different people. If somebody, I, I know I worked with somebody on a speech for their daughter's wedding, and they did memorize quite a bit of it because they, every word counted. But again, they rehearsed it enough that they sounded awesome. This was pre-COVID and then they got to do that. Um, so, so again, it's going to be different for different people. Did that answer the question there? Yes, very nicely. Yeah, Thank good. you. Jean, I have a question. Yes. I don't know, it's Arden. I don't know I, if this is um, kind of related to what you're talking about, but uh, when you're online 
and you have notes like so i i can tell when people are reading notes like they're mm -hmm. they've um not shared their screen but they've got it open mm -hmm. um is there any way to avoid looking because you, you know looking like you're looking <laughs> at your notes? <laughs> I don't know. Glance. so is this yeah i mean well maybe it's not such a bad thing to look at your notes if you have to. I, the the thing is if i'm feeling like okay i better not look there and and then we're a little discombobulated but if you look at them and get them and then bring it back and you feel like you've owned the material enough i mean i think when it doesn't work is if somebody is just so glued to these things that they're not able to also connect but if it's just oh let me look and see oh yeah i, I wanted to share that as well as long as you're not feeling like oh i, I shouldn't be looking there then it, it really doesn't matter that's I, I don't know anybody have thoughts on that i i, I wish we could unmute you all i i, I like to hear from people <laughs> oh, okay great my uh something about voice modulation yes so the developing your voice is really important in speaking and i know i have worked with quite a few women that do sound a bit young and they're very bright, very mature women, but then their voice makes them sound 16. <laughs> so it's good to develop the voice. And usually it's it's um, a little bit too much tension in the throat and not enough air quality, a, a good breathing. And the more that you can find that release of your sound, the better. And then for modulation, be excited about what you're talking about. You know, feel why the words matter. Uh, practicing with reading kids' books out loud is a great exercise to do as well. I know I worked with somebody once that had a very monotone voice, and then I brought out Dr. Seuss. And man, he was great. It was really fun. I mean, he was very dynamic. And so I thought, okay, well, how can we bring more of that him to his presentations? Because ultimately, you want your voice to show that you care what you're talking about and that's what gets them invested in your message as well yeah is that clear on that any other tips so oh and and just vocal exercises like humming doing things like ma 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 breathing doing um, tongue twisters, all of those things can be great. And they're really fun. I love doing the voice exercises. Okay, any other questions here? All right, I'm going to, uh, let's do a quick review here. So you want to change your negative dialogue to the uh, internal negative dialogue to positive. Remember that it is specific and self-initiated and um, positive. Breathe, breath really helps you move to that stay and play. Don't we all need some more stay and play, right? Move from judgment to curiosity. Again, if you're judging yourself harshly about something, be gentle, think, huh? What will make me feel better in this situation? What is it I need to know? What is it I need to remember? But you don't need to know everything. You don't need to know everything. Nobody does. It's impossible. And expect good outcomes. You're much more likely to get them, like Phoenix gets them, when you expect them. So I wanted to let you know about a course I've been putting together. It's an online course that I started when the pandemic started. And it feels like I brought in 20 years of my 
experience and per perceptions about speaking into this course. I'm really proud of it. It's going to be released in probably about two weeks here now, but there's um, six modules. There's lots of videos. They are worksheets and we start with creating a confident state and there's audio files for you to relax and help you sleep. There's a create a clear message. That's how to get your message um, meeting the needs of your listeners in a nice clear way. Tell a great story. You learn the art and craft of storytelling. You learn how to find your stories, how to deliver them. Your voice matters. So we talked a little bit about that. And there's also audio files with this for you to do vocal warm ups. Your body speaks. Again, body language is so important. And you'll learn how to have your body say what you intend. And then speaking on your feet, that's more about speaking extemporaneously, how to relax into that. And you'll learn some theater improv tools, um, uh, exercises we do with that as well. So these are different ways that if you wanted to engage a little bit more with me, there is the course and the course will be actually discounted for 50%, the introductory price uh, goes down to 497. And for Revel 11 folks, you get an extra $100 off. So if you're interested in that, let me know and we'll make sure you get that code to put in. There's also a free webinar, Speak with Confidence, of some of the similar material here, but it's um, produced. My husband helped put it together as music. It's, it's a pretty fun video and that's, that's totally free. Um, Zoom group coaching calls, the speaker circle, that's something I'm contemplating doing if there's interest in that. And if you wanted some coaching, like I did with Joni, you can have a free 30 minute call just to make sure we're a great fit to work together. So if you're interested in that, feel free to, to reach out to me and it's my contact information there. Thank you, Jean, so much. Sure. I know that you will all have a very good experience with Jean as I did. So <laughs> yes. thank you so much thank for you. joining us tonight, sure. Jean. We are so thrilled to have you and to have all of those tips. I always learn something I have to say. Well, and that's great. I, I, do I, do have, I do have one more tip here, and oh, that's okay. above all else. Remember, it's not about you. <laughs> it's about <laughs> your message and why it matters. And the more that you get involved with that message, the better. And then the fear just, you know, takes a back seat there. So, um, and then, well, thank you so much for all of these nice comments. Are there any last questions here? I actually have a question about self-deprecating humor. Yeah. Like I know that you encourage stories. Mm -hmm. but then at the beginning, you were saying people believe in what how you present yourself. So is there ever a risk of self-deprecating humor that someone then won't take you seriously? <clears throat> yeah, the, the, I would say if you use a whole lot of it, like that's all the humor that you use and you know every story you tell is self-deprecating then that might get to be too much one self-deprecating story near the beginning can be a really great thing and really endear you to your audience um, because then you think oh yeah we're all in this together so so a little bit can be fine the thing that's important is you want to make sure if if it was something that you were feeling um, a little uh, upset about or, or traumatic. I mean, it, it, fear, humor is fear, plus, I mean, not fear, is, is um, something difficult plus distance. But you want to make sure you are over that event. There's no charge to it whatsoever. So you truly can laugh at yourself. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions there? Feel free to unmute. <laughs> Do you have another question? Yeah. Um, yeah. You had mentioned a something for sound, so, a microphone or something. Oh, yes, yes. Here, right here, there's a blue Yeti. A Yeti? Blue yeah, it's Yeti. called a blue Yeti. It's a really pretty inexpensive mic. What I like about it is that it plugs right into your computer. Oh. So you so don't. It overrides your computer's microphone right you need to make sure you when you go into zoom you click the blue yeti you know for the microphone okay um 
but it's it's yeah it's fairly inexpensive and you don't the more expensive mics you need more equipment and you know but but for using for something like this 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 quality is fine for that so does it help with noise cancelization yeah, you can put it on different levels and I think it helps some. Now, something that I, I have done here in the room is I've put some blankets around. Again, I told you, you're seeing the clean part of the room. There's like a, a stand with a blanket and blanket on the floor to help muffle, you know, to not make it so echoey. So that's one thing that it can get a little echoey if you, if you don't do that. Okay, good yeah. to know. Yeah. Any other questions here? Jean? Well, hey. <laughs> hey, I did have a question. I was okay, late. Great. That's fine. <laughs> so how do you prevent your tone from being misconstrued or being seen as aggressive? I'm from New York and sometimes I come across really it perceived to be abrasive, but it's my passion mixed with my culture. And how do you prevent mis being misconstrued? And you know, I, I, I love your voice. It sounds very spunky. <laughs> it sounds like you got personality and spunk and, and you know what, maybe you just can't please everybody all the time. <laughs> um, you know, I think if there's, if you're bringing us uh, that sense of, you know, you still want to connect with people. I, I, I wouldn't say that you want to change your voice to not be who you are. You want to be your authentic self. And I think it's wonderful to have a variety of folks there. So, uh, you know, at the same time, it could be you pause a little bit and let them speak. Um, so smiling can help too. But again, I like your voice. I like your voice. Thank you. I, I appreciate want, you. I wouldn't want you to change it. I, we, 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 we need oh, flavor. So. We need flavor in the world. I, agree, I appreciate Tanya. it. <laughs> okay, well, I think I'll hand it back over to you then, Monica. Well, thank you, thank you. Jean. Thank that was so helpful. You know, it's funny, Joni and I joke around quite a bit that, you know, we've been doing this for four years now and it never gets easy. You know, it's like we still get a little nervous be before every single event that we host. But I do feel like the breathing has been incredibly helpful to me. Um, and I got that tip from you a long time ago and I still practice it almost every time. So thank right. you. So I, I want to actually add something to that is, yeah, you know, we're human beings, we're alive, this, this stuff happens, it's not bad, you don't, it's okay. And you don't have to stay there. So you feel that charge because you're, you know, you want to do a good job, you're excited, and know that <clears throat> you can move through it. And, and I think it's also important to think, well, how far you've come over a period of time, because it, it's it's these little increments of change that happen, and these little increments, you they build up, and then you look back from say a year ago or a few years ago and go, what you know what things are things are have changed, and I know they both have for you too, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you, Jean. 